Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Hello and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing amazing as per usual. I have missed y'all. I hope you have missed me. I am trying really hard to stay consistent, but it's hard being a mom and working and I finished uni now, so I don't have to deal with that. I'm so grateful, so grateful. Um, but I am looking forward to my second year, I'm not gonna lie, which is gonna be a challenge, but I'll bring it on, okay? Yeah, I will graduate, okay? Um, I'm here today with yet another story, and I know it seems like my stories are not ending, but if I'm alive, I guess they're never gonna end, you know? The story I am about to tell you guys today and I would like to share with you is um, the loss of a loved one. And I know we spoke about my mother's death, but this occurred when I was really young. I don't really remember what age I was, to be honest. Um, probably five, six. I don't, I don't really remember what, uh, what age I was, but um, is my little sister. Her name is Hanan, but she's also known as MLA. Uh, we grew up in a really small village and I we didn't meet my mother until I was, um, I think, seven. Uh, me and my sister, but my other sister passed away in the village that we were in and that's the story that I want to share with you guys today because I was a witness to her passing. One day we were at my grandma's house and we were being kids, you know, we were going around and um, uh, playing with the animals outside, whether it be a sheep, a cow, or a, you know, the, the chicken, whatever it was, we would play with it. Um, so we were just being kids, we were playing, and I remember we were in the house and we were playing, right? And my sister, Allah, she had such a beautiful uh, smile, but she was really, really, really young. She must have been uh, one, one and a half, two years old. Um, and whenever she would see any of uh, any of her um, siblings or cousins or her favorite aunt, she would put her hands like on the side and then she would like flap and she would run towards uh, whoever it is. So we knew, like she knew our presence and we knew like, she, like where she was about, right? So anyway, we were playing one day and my sister was just, you know, being a little baby, um, playing, just playing around and everyone was chilling, everything was so calm. And then out of nowhere, my sister just, like she was stood up and then she just dropped. And the moment she dropped, she started shaking. And we all stood there stunned because we would think we, none of us knew what was going on. And no one explained anything so they rushed us out of the house they said go go play outside go play with the animals so we were like okay so being kids we left we just assumed that she was fine and when she dropped and she started shaking this white foam came, bubbles came out of her mouth and I don't think I'll ever forget that it's imprinted in my head for the rest of my life. Um, so anyway, we went outside and we were playing and then we came back hours later. And when we came back to the house, there were people at the house. Uh, everyone was rushing around. We came into the house and everyone's rushing around. And on the floor, there's something small wrapped in white so we're like where's MLA because we knew her as MLA right I later found out her name was actually Hanan 
So I'm like, where's El Valle? And then someone, uh, bruh, my memory, someone said, uh, bear in mind, I'm really young. I'm surprised I even remember. I asked, where is Emily? Because like I said, normally when we're around, she comes flapping her hands and uh, she comes towards us all happy and excited, right? That didn't happen. So we're like, where's Emily? And we saw her drop in it. So we were curious as to where she was. So someone, they pointed at this little thing wrapped in white and they said that's MLA and then I had to I looked and I was like that's not a Malay and then my sister is there and she's like that's that, that's not MLA so like where is she like all of us are wondering us kids are wondering like where MLA is so they tell us that she passed away and we were like, what? Like, we, I think, we, like, <sighs> we knew what death was, but we thought we were going to see her again. Like, we were going to see, like, it's, I don't, I don't know, okay? I just, I never took death as, like, I'm never going to see that. I don't, I don't know. Like, I, <laughs> bruh, they don't explain nothing, okay? No one explains nothing. It's Allah, that's it, okay? Okay? Anyway, they said the same thing. Allah had to stop. Emily went to Mate. And me and my sister lost it. Okay, we were hysterical. We were crying. Um, trying to uh, um, uh, like go towards uh, my little sister's body. And we couldn't. So they took us into, a, um, into the house. They put us in a room. And I think we were locked in. I'm pretty sure we were locked in. And there was a little window outside and they buried her there. And the funny thing is, often animals would come in and out of the house that way. So it was, it was, it was at the back of the house. They buried her at the back of the house, right? So we saw her being buried, me and my uh, my older sister. And then they went away. I think they were either eating or praying. I'm not too sure what they were doing, but we climbed out of that window. And then we went to the grave uh, where she was buried. And we uh, proceeded to dig her back up. So with our tiny little hands we dug 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 until we felt the material and then we took her out and then we put her on our lap and then we proceeded to unwrap her <sighs> and we were trying to at the same time wake her up but it wasn't working nothing we did was working and we were hysterical we were crying and then my grandma came someone came someone in the family and i think because they couldn't find us in the room that they locked us in so they <laughs> yo they were they were who 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 uh, uh, digs up someone who's just been buried we thought that they did it like by mistake like she's alive like they buried her alive that's what we thought right so that's why we dug her out because we, we're thinking none of this makes sense. Like, why is she buried? Like, why? No, like, you need to explain shit to your kids, bro. Especially when it comes to sh like death and trauma. Like, just talk to your kids. Like, this is not. Mm -mm. Anyway, they took her. We I don't remember what happened after that. I think we uh, we were put in a room, and. Um, they reburied her and then we had to fucking witness her being reburied and then we were showered in blood and then now thinking about it because I, I was showered in blood after, FG, uh, after I got the FGM procedure done and then again when uh, I, we dug up uh, our sister so I'm thinking they do it because of shock but I don't know what the hell made them think that blood was going to calm Shamsa down. <laughs> Yo, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. 
it weighed, they waited until that shit dried on my body and then washed it off and it is the most disgusting feeling ever no don't do it i would not recommend it and besides i think that shit is ritual I'm not thinking about it or like who the fuck showers in blood that's not okay anyway and then that's it that it was just left like that and i had my suspicions yeah about the reasons why because i never i never ever got an explanation as to why she died what happened nothing but, I, I don't even I think I tend to remember the traumatic things everything else ask me what I had for breakfast yesterday or for lunch or last week or like ask me where I was last year <laughs> actually in my house <laughs> we're in lockdown while I watched it after that no one spoke about it but the saddest thing the saddest thing about the story is my mom i have a daughter now right and i think most of you parents can relate if you have children of your own we were staying with my grandma so when my sister passed away like i said we knew her as mla right but my mother named her daughter hanan so when she passed away they didn't have like mobile phones and places to call each other right so they would send each other letters so my mother received a letter that um that said may she rest in peace mla right and my mom was like my mom assumed like it was someone else's child and she was like Allah and i think a, a few months later my father comes back home from work and um because they used to work in Saudi Arabia at the time. My mother was a maid. I don't remember what my father was. But he came and he's like, did you hear the news? And she's like, what news? Like, she got a letter that uh, uh, Malay passed away. and But she said, oh, uh, and she's like, yeah, like, you know, who whose daughter is it? <sighs> He said, is yours, is ours. So can you imagine someone finding out, a mother finding out months after her child died? Yo, I'm shaking, <laughs> I'm shaking. I came back from work as well, I'm exhausted. But I can't, I can't, I can't, mm -mm, I can't imagine it. I, I can't imagine it, I can't. So every time I think about anything that happened to me, I automatically think about my mom, now that I'm a mom. Like when I think back, I think automatically about my mother because I realized like the amount of trauma that she went through and everything that she had to do, uh, do and deal with in order to raise us, raise me, do you understand? And yes, yeah, some parents get it wrong and but majority of the time it's they are a product of trauma and immigration and a uh, 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 war so i have a lot of sympathy for them don't ever get that twisted i have a lot of sympathy for the older generation because they've been through hell okay but this is why i crave better because i feel like there is so much potential in Somalia and the Somali people and the Somali children. It is it's, 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 it's amazing the amount of success that uh, has already come out of Somalia. And that is uh, uh, that the amount of success. You're more, more success for more people. Give more people the opportunity to shine. Do you understand? That's what my hopes and my dreams is that everybody is able to live the way that they want to get the education that they deserve. Safety that they need. Our people deserve that. The Somali people deserve that. And you know what? As someone said in the comment section, you know, that is, I can't believe that all of these things have happened to you and you've had all of these experiences. 
but I have a no doubt in my mind that there are so many other women, yeah, and young girls that have worse stories, worse than me, worse than any of my experiences. But the other reason why I'm telling, I'm sharing these experiences, being bad, yeah, and it'll get better. I'll show you, or I'll, um, I'll tell you guys how I've overcome, how I am now. We'll get to that. But right now, I want you guys to get to know me, to understand really and truly why I am doing this. Because a lot of people come on YouTube and yes, they sit down and uh, 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 they talk and they blow up. All right, cool. That, that, that's a plus. I, I see that as a plus. I don't see it as my ultimate goal to blow up and to become famous off YouTube. That's not my ultimate goal. My goal is to get enough exposure so that I, myself, Shamsa, yeah, can do something to elevate Somalia in some way. And the one thing that I want to do so desperately is create a formal justice system. Because come to find out, and I am so mad about this, that Somalia does not have a formal justice system. And this is the end of our video. So if you are new, um, welcome to the Guinea of Peace community. Um, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment because I love interacting with you guys. You guys have been nothing but lovely. I love you all so much. I want to have a separate day for um, like story time, and I want to have a separate day for uh, general topics because I think I need to be a lot more organized than I am right now because my videos are just like mixy and matchy so i need to be a lot more organized inshallah but i will do uh, and uh, take care and i'll see you soon